Hi everyone, welcome to episode 5 of the Titi Jaya Facebook Live. I'm David Shechong, your moderator host. And today we're you know, very thankful to Titi Jaya you know, bring together two very prominent experts in their fields. Right? We have Mr. Daniel Chow, uh, who is the uh, founder of uh, Daniel C. Consult. He's also a very experienced CFO of uh, public listed companies. He's had 27 years of experience in finance and taxation. Daniel, maybe can I give you a minute to share a little bit about your background as well, Daniel? <laughs> oh, hi. Hi, David. Uh, well, I'm currently a trainer and consultant. Uh, after the collapse of GST, I focus on other modes of training. And right now, I do partner a friend to offer outsourced CFO services. Besides my training and consultancy services, I'm mainly servicing the SME companies. So that's a bit of my background. Thanks, Daniel. We'll find out more as well about CFO, you know, outsourced service. Very interesting. And next, as well, we want to introduce Mr. Lok Chikian, who's the director of Global Business Solutions of Baker Tilly. He's a chartered accountant by profession and he has lots of corporate experience. Uh, Mr. Lok, would you like to share a little bit about yourself? Just a minute. Uh, Hi, everybody. Hi. I'm CK Lo, actually. You can call me short for CK. I'm the director from Piccadilly Global Business Solutions. What you probably want to know, what is Global Business Solutions, GBS for short? We basically provide business solutions, especially focusing on the outsourcing of accounting services and payroll to clients. But we are also very much into providing other services like the corporate liability, business continuity planning, and also various other type of services that will solve your problem. Right, over to you, David. Okay, thank you very much. So gentlemen, and uh, to all our viewers out there, today our topic is on cash flow and digitalization, right? Your mantra to survive COVID-19 crisis. So this gentleman, both gentlemen, right, will share their business experiences, which we believe is very relevant to SME business owners and also to CNM management or anyone, right, looking to improve their business. So I will pass on the baton to Daniel as well to start his presentation. Daniel, I invite you. Thank you very much, uh, David. Uh, I shall share my screen and hopefully uh, you can see it. Uh, can you see it right now? Yep. Yes, nice and clear. All right, good. Good day to you folks, everybody. As you can see from the screen, uh, the title that was uh, I was invited to speak on for 20 minutes, hopefully I'll keep to my time frame, is cash flow and digitalization, your mantra to survive COVID-19. So three keywords, cash flow, a digitalization, and to survive. Okay, a little bit background of myself, which I've actually already uh, shared just now. I'm an accountant by profession, ACCA, MIA, CPTF. And right before I came out uh, to be a sole proprietor, I was the CFO and trading director of IFCA, MSC, Berhad. My phone number and email is on the screen. That's important. Okay, David, do you remember what happened three months ago? Three months ago, like most of us will be very busy doing huh. what? Celebration. <laughs> Chinese year, I was born right. in the year of the rodents. Huh? I, I'm okay. 48 years old, no secret about it. Mm -hmm. So in the 2020 New Year resolution, what was that now? For those who read Chinese, you know what is it? For those who don't, I provided the translation. Ah, my resolution, business success. I want to save 1 million ringgit in my bank account. Holiday overseas, big house, change a new car three months ago. Now we have a new resolution, new target. And the new target is water to survive. Wow, so fast. In three months, the target of having this, 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 this now become to survive. All of you know what happened. So let's see what uh, this newspaper cutting I took from uh, the star, the president of SME Association Malaysia, Dr. Michael Kang, was quoted by the star as saying he expected at least 50% of SME businesses will close down and up to 4 million people will lose their job. Now, 
we are not here to debate where he get the numbers or whether the 4 million include foreigners or not. But what he is trying to say is this. He expects 50% of SME business will stand and the remaining will just game over, will fall, will close down. We don't know whether is it by end of the year or one or two years from now. We don't know, but this is just an estimation. Okay, now what is an SME? I guess most of uh, you, the audience, already uh, know or have seen uh, this uh, chart from SME Corp. If you are not a manufacturer, as long as you meet either one of the criteria, having 75 employees or less, or having annual turnover below 20 million, you are part of the SME. Now, however, take note that Perkeso do not take this SME definition for their wage subsidy program claim. Neither Lembaga Hasil Dalam Negeri take this definition for the preferential tax rate. Huh? It was only very recently, less than two weeks ago, they used this definition for the special uh, special deduction for discount offered to SME or commercial property rental. We won't come into uh, detail on this. Now, overall, what is happening over the last two months? Huh? I believe locally as well as globally, whether you are SME or large company, many business entrepreneurs have been drafting contingency plan and adopting special measures to tackle the crisis. Okay? And due to liquidity pressure, many have been doing or implementing austerity drives. Some people ask me, hey, Daniel, what is austerity drive? Huh? Easy English, pay cut, cost cutting. And as a result, many fear. Psychologically, they have a lot of fear that there will be a huge economic slump. Some say, worse, like, like 20. 2008 financial crisis, there were even some report to compare it with the Great Depression a century ago. And needless to say, many bosses have directed their accountants to try to capitalize on the economic stimulus package announced by the government. Now, there are some good bosses also, like Titi Jaya, a good boss. They even try to ensure the safety and well-being of their workers. Now, I cut one newspaper, uh, well, I cut one Facebook posting by one of my friends who owns a manufacturing company with more than 200 employees. The COO say, thank you, boss. Thank you for the salary in March. Okay, if we look at business, your company as this train, you realize that the train cannot function or cannot move without a rail track. Now, I'm not Chinese educated, but when I was very young, I always heard people say, oh, the business xiong zhuo guai dou, meaning, what is guai dou? Guai dou, I didn't realize. I didn't know what it is until uh, a few years when I was much older. Uh, guai dou actually means the rail track. So the question here is, how can the business improve its rail track from a cash flow or business viewpoint? Now, what is happening to your existing rail track? Most of you agree, you are in this situation. You have falling sales, or if you are a retailer in a shopping mall, you have no sales at all during the MCO. As a result, if you are a service provider and your customer is not opening, your debt collection suffered. And that will lead to very low cash balance, or your bank overdraft have maxed up. There's probably no more headroom available. But however, you realize that Alamak, my fixed cost commitment, like my rental, my leasing payment, my staff cost still remains very high. And that some boss, then some bosses will say, Alamak, I still have a lot of excess and idling staff force my driver, my warehouse employee, my uh, receptionist, what are they doing? All these lead into pressing the panic button for most businesses. So now, how? What is the solutions that we have? Okay, now we are talking about extending the rail track currently. David, if you yeah. look at the photo here, 
Tell me what do you see, David? Well, I see a man uh, who is who looks ill. He looks ill and looks like you know there's some platelets there, so it's like a life infusion, a, a life blood, right. life blood, life blood. Right. blood transfusion. If a man has suffered severe blood loss due to a surgery or due to an accident, he needs blood transfusion to stay alive. Now, your business can be in this situation right now. You have massive blood loss and you need blood transfusion. And from the business viewpoint, blood transfusion is the cash flow. Regardless of how you think, political or not, Always remember these two words. Cash is king. Cash is everything. So, in extending your rail track, focus on the controllables. If you remember the uh, book written by Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of uh, Effective uh, People or Effective Managers, habit number one is be proactive, where you have to focus on the controllables. Okay? So, five of the six items that I'm sharing have something to do with cash flow. Now, as a business owner, two key questions you must ask. The first question, how much cash does your company have now? Now, when I'm saying now, I do not mean your latest uh, accounts that is ready for audit as of 31st December 2019. I do not mean the latest management account on 29 of February that you have before the lockdown or the MCO on 18th of March. I mean now, today, how much cash does your company have right now? And the second important question to ask is, how long will that cash last you? Now, in order to answer this question, you must have to take, you need to take step number one, which is cash flow projection or cash flow management. Okay. Now, if last time many SME companies who are, you know, receiving cash daily, for example, you are a retailer, you are a restaurant operator, you don't do cash flow forecast. But probably you need to do monthly cash flow forecasts now, or probably immediately after the MCO is lifted, you need to do weekly or daily forecast. Now, you may ask the question where to look for cash in my existing business. Now, assuming you are in a manufacturing industry, a retail, a, a, a wholesaler, a distributor, cash in your business are available in these seven factors, in these seven keys. The price, volume, your cost of goods sold, your stocks, your overhead, your debtors, and your creditors, right? Now you need to know that it's very crucial for your business to work out various scenarios to establish a path forward to optimizing your cash balances. Now, you're going to do a lot of scenarios. Do a base scenario, assuming that you will have no cash flow at all, despite you have billings right, in the next few weeks or months. Then you can do some optimistic scenario or some pessimistic scenario. Now, number two. You need to bring blood transfusion. So where do you go? You can go for your bank loan, your credit card. Now I suggest go back to your relationship, your bank relationship manager, okay? Because it is about relationship. The more he knows your business background, the easier it is. Peer-to-peer -peer lending and equity crowdfunding, there's another option. Of course, this is a bit more technical. I'm not going to go through in detail. Now, credit card. I have a customer, a client who told me uh, in the third week of March, I need to cancel my credit card immediately because they're charging interest very high. Now, I disagree with him. Say if you have a credit card facility, your corporate credit card of 200000 or 500000 and if you have utilized just a portion of it, the credit card facilities are available for you to use immediately. The process is slow, it is, it's much shorter. So take, make, make, take advantage of that. Now, other than that, you can go to your family or your friends for funds raising. Huh? You can either offer them preference shares or options. It's much easier to go to your family and friends rather than to go to a bank officer who hardly know you. Huh? Uh, I have people asking me, uh, but, 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 would it be 
a question on balancing or whether it's a liability or equity. I don't want to lose a small percentage of my shares. Do I lose a, a controlling interest? I told my friends, when crisis time is here, you don't really care whether it's liability or equity. It is better to own 80% of a company that will survive, that have blood transfusion, than having a 100% of a company that is going to die in less than six months. Okay? Now, the fourth area that I, can, I would like to share is on communication with your stakeholders. So let's ask the question, who are my major stakeholders? Uh, as an accountant of public listed company, I can advise that you have quite a number of stakeholders. Some of the major stakeholders for a company are your customers, number one. Number two, your suppliers. Then your employees. And for most SME businesses, I am quite sure at least 90, 95% will have bank loans. And in your communication with your stakeholder, I believe it is always imperative to practice honest communication. Your stakeholders are not dumb. They know your situation. So to your customers, these are some of the tips. You have to start negotiating or revising credit term. Perhaps you are a contractor. Your client is owing you retention sum. Would you like to come up to, with a discussion? Cut 1% of your retention sum, get your money now, rather than six months, five months later. For your, if your customers are, are, are able to operate, for example, it's time for you to assess the current need of your customers. What are the products or services that they need? It's time to gather feedback. Uh, if you are doing e-commerce, this is a good time to get important information because information is very critical, very crucial. You may also need to speak to your suppliers. Uh, this is the time to discuss credit terms, perhaps last time 30 days. It's time to negotiate for maybe 60 days or 90 days. Or if you are buying from three or four uh, suppliers, maybe it's time to come to a negotiation table, offer what if I buy exclusively only from you for the next 12 months, 24 months, but you lower down your cost or give me better terms instead, right? Or I'm sure uh, if you are in business where you don't own your own uh, shops, this is a time for you to negotiate with your landlord. And if your landlord is the shopping mall, there's always a power in uh, collective bargaining. So you may need to think about collectively uh, joining together with other fellow tenants to, to bargain, right? It's important to negotiate with your landlord on payment terms, rental discount, etc., etc. Okay? Now, with your employees, your third stakeholders, be honest with them on the current financial affairs. Your employees would understand because with today's uh, modern uh, uh, WhatsApp, social media, everybody knows which business is closing down, which business, which company is doing pay cut, etc., etc. So be honest with your employees on your current financial affairs that you are not doing well. It's a new normal. And you ought to negotiate a pay cut with selected staff, especially those in the senior position. Or in some companies, not all, perhaps it's time. Now, I experienced that 22 years ago during the Asian financial crisis. There are bosses who offer the employee, instead of paying cash, I pay you a small percentage of shares in, in, in exchange. Not all employees accept, some may, however. So this is time for you to communicate with your shareholders. Now, the fourth stakeholder, the bankers. It's the time for you to negotiate to restructure your bank loan. Now, some may say, hey, I got six months moratorium, but don't wait until the end of six months. Negotiate now because at least, my guess estimates, at least 50% of SME will need to have more negotiation at the end of six months moratorium. They need more time to pay back. And one tips I have, for some SME bosses, be humble. Be humble when you approach your bankers. Uh, just before, just to share with you, during Chinese New Year time, I, I 
talked to one of my clients. He was very upset that one of the banker wants to cut or reduce their overdraft facilities gradually. And he said, I want to change banker. I want to kick this banker out. But luckily, he didn't take that step because this is not the time for you to, 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 to show uh, the bankers the door. This is the time where your, life, your, your future actually depends on the bankers. All right. Now, number five is grab and the whatever government stimulus packages that is in offer. Now, in that part, I'm sure most of us need to do this. We need to study and then apply for the government stimulus package. Now, in the internet, in the Facebook, you have seen a lot, you have read a lot. But let me try to give you one example. Now, this was a slide taken two weeks ago when I conducted my uh, webinar on comparing WSP versus ERP. So I throw this question to the crowd. Do you know which is better for you? Option one, two, three, or four? And after the webinar, someone called me and said, luckily I attended your webinar. It seems that to them, it's not applying at all or delay, delaying in applying the WSP is better. Why? Because retrenching some of the excess staff seems to save much more money than the 800 ringgit or 1,002 ringgit that the company had. So these are the things that you need to study and then apply. Some SMEs still are, are still not aware that EPF have recently, this report was on 23rd of April, launches an ECAP to allow SME to restructure the employer's contribution on the EPF for the month of April, May and June. So take advantage of all these uh, uh, government stimulus packages. Now, there are many more government stimulus packages. Uh, I don't need to spend too much time on going through this. You can see from the screen, these are effective automatically. Some are just deferment of payment. Huh? Levy have been exempted, loan repayment, no more. But some you need to apply. For example, other than the WSP and ERP, you need to revise your tax estimate in the third month if you have a... Uh, uh, your tax installment if you have, then EPF uh, contribution can also be restructured. So at the end of the thing, uh, what is the target on this cash flow management? The target is simple. You need to bring down, if you are a trader, uh, a, a, re, a wholesaler or manufacturer, bring down your cash conversion cycle. What I mean is this, your inventory day, bring it down, find ways to bring it down. Customer collection, find way to bring it down. And for your payable, find way to extend paying them. On your existing cash, you need to keep your existing cash or bank loan to the maximum. Huh? Take up your six months bank monitorium and you've got to restructure your other loans where possible. Now, when I talk about other loan, I'm not sure how many of, of your company have other loans such as uh, BMW Credit such as uh, Oryx leasing. Uh, those are the monthly installment that is not covered under the six months moratorium. You need to restructure. Huh? For the cash inflow, uh, the tips is you need to accelerate your collection effort. You need to review it daily. For example, if you are an audit firm, uh, I'm not sure whether Mr. Look or uh, audit firm, for those companies that you have audited uh, ended June 30th last year, how many have paid your audit fee? How many have paid your tax agent fee when the MCO started on 18 March? It is quite common that some SME practitioner says, oh, still not paid. Then you need to secure your funding fast. It's not the time to be so indecisive thinking, shall I take or not take the equity and your loan? And you must strategize to catch up your lost sales and your profit. On your cash outflow, do it wisely and intelligently on your cost cutting. You need that to survive. It's also a time for you to come and talk to your supplier to seek a longer credit term or higher credit limit. And you must prepare your payment planning frequently. Now, David, allow me to share this. I know I extended 20 minutes a little bit. No 22 years ago, I learned this huh, when I was working in a construction company. Uh, at that time, I was just a young accountant and the finance director said, it is a wrong question to ask, can the payment due date be extended? The right question to ask is, what could happen? What is the worst thing to happen if we 
don't pay. That is what you need to learn in the art of survival. Now, this lady, God bless her soul, she's no longer with us. Uh, the late Chu Ning, Chu Chin Ning, Taiwanese American, have written this book. These two books take place: Black Heart, The Art of War for Women, Gui Dao. And what she said, let me share this with you. Thick face is a shield, black heart is a spear. So be thick face and have a black heart. And the last part before I conclude, not for me to speak, obviously, it's on embracing technology or digitalization. Okay, now David, I have a quiz for you, David. Please okay. look at the screen. Sure. Who is responsible for your company's digital transformation? CFO, CTO, or CEO? What do you think? <laughs> okay, for me, the most direct answer will be the T, the CTO. But I guess, you know, in a big scale, perhaps A, B, and C. <laughs> okay, the answer is none of the above. The answer oh, is COVID-19. <laughs> COVID I got this joke from the internet. Okay, so when you're... Rail track has been extended. What is the outcome? You will have an extended uh, customer listing. Probably future revenue stream will be better. And your stakeholders relationship, the trust relationship will be stronger. Then you're, you will be more resilient to face future disruption. Who knows? In five years, 10 years, there may be another major disruption. Then you will have a better resources available when next opportunity arrives in order to take over your competitors. So this is definitely my last slide. I'm approaching 24 minutes now. If you are successful in extending your rail track, you are a business leader. In Chinese, it is But if you fail, then I'm sorry, you are a business failure. So thank you very much for the 24 minutes. Over back to you, David. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Daniel, for your insightful presentation. I felt that, uh, you know, this is very, very relevant for people, you know, in different in business, whether large corporates or even SMEs or any business owners. Uh, before we, you know, go on to, uh, you know, invite Mr. Lok Chiken to speak, I just want to sum up, you know, some of the key points that, you know, I, I've gotten here. So I think overall, right, one of the key takeaways for me was that, you know, lifeblood, you know, cash flow is the lifeblood of the company. And all the trail tracks that you've shown earlier are steps that you know businesses could and should take, right? But I think some of the other areas as well is, is quite interesting. I, I, for example, comparison on previous uh, economic uh, uh, downturns, and also and also the government stimulus. Perhaps we'll go back to that in the Q and A sessions on what people can do, right? Okay. Thank you, uh, Daniel, for that. Now we go on to Mr. Lok Chiken. Now, look. Um, for those of you who've just joined us, I just want to you know, reintroduce Mr. Lok again. Right? He's the Director of Global Business for Baker Tilly. Right? He's a Charter Accountant by training. He has also extensive corporate experience. Right? And he shall, will be talking about digitalization. Right? In our topic today, titled Cash Flow and Digitalization, Your Mantra to Survive COVID-19 Crisis. So we pass uh, the mic to Mr. Lok. Thank you, David. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone, wherever you are, all right. <clears throat> well, I have to thanks Daniel for actually nicely leading my, the presentation to the need for digitalization after his extensive sharing with us about how cash flow will prepare us to survive for this uh, pandemic crisis, all right. Before we dive into the topic of how digitalization works for you, let me share with you an update on the status of the economic stimulus package in Malaysia with you all, all right, which has been uh, released by the government uh, last week and yesterday. For the rich subsidy program, WSP for short, has at 26th of April, about 195,000 employers has applied uh, about with about 1.5 million workers. That works out to be about, on average, that about each employer is having about 7.7 .7 employees to round up its eight. And ringgit, about 1.35 billion has uh, been approved to be dispersed, working out to be about the subsidy, working out about 900 ringgit employee per 
month, all right? Well, I will share with you later, you will see that how it leads to some, why is the need of digitalization, all right? You're talking about w WSP, the wage subsidy program is applicable to all corporations as long as you meet the criteria, not only for SME. Now, moving on for the relief funds, the so special relief fund, SRF for short. The latest uh, release, 26th of April, it has been uh, uh, announced that about 4.5 billion ringgit has been uh, approved for 8,500 SMEs. So if you work out mathematically, each SME managed to get about 529,000 for each application, all right? And about 71% have been utilized of the total 6.3 billion. And this is for the SME. Now, you may be probably asking, how about those who, who are going to enjoy the 0% per annum? You'll be thinking that because it's 0%, everybody who meet the criteria will rush and apply for it. Now, let me share with you. There are 700 million available. 500 million coming from Bank Simpanan National and about 200 million coming from Tekun. All right. So, so total of 700 million. Let me give you the stats. You'll be surprised. On 17th of April, it was announced, approved about 45 million only. That's been approved for 1,500 micro SME. Because this 0% Facility is meant for micro SME, all right, 0%. And according to SME Corp, which this now uh, Daniel shared, all right, under the definition of SME, micro SME, actually, there are 700,000 micro SMEs. So we are talking about only 45 million, 1,500 micro SME only. So with only 6.4% approved, looks like the micro SMEs are facing challenges in applying the facilities, I guess. Well, after phone calls, after re talking to some micro SMEs owners, and then we gathering from our intelligence, we at Baker Dili Malaysia, we actually gathered that there are the, the main challenges that all these companies are facing. Let me share with you, all right? One very simple word, availability of documents. Well, when you apply for any banks, loans, facilities, or even you want to submit for your, your subsidy program, you need documents, lots of documents. And how are you going to apply? Now the government are actually pushing for all the online application. Now let me just run through one by one with you the, the importance of all these documents. To start off with, a lot of micro enterprises, they do not incorporate their business meaning that they are neither Sandrine Berhard, sole proprietor or anything. They basically operate through online methods like Facebook, Instagram, WeChat, social media. And I would say they basically operate below the radar. Now, I'm going to show you why it's, it's not an advantage to go under the radar. First thing, the subsidy program. Do you know that the business and employees that are not registered with SOXO or EIS are not eligible for the subsidy program until they are registered. Now, coming up, a lot of businesses, they don't even have a basis bank account. They are all running on personal bank account because, and there's no segregation. Again, you ask why? There's no, nothing to do with digitalization. Hang on, let me just go through. A lot of these businesses from micro enterprise, they don't have audited accounts because they're not incorporated. And some of them, they don't even have a management account or even a simple account showing cash inflow or outflow since they did not incorporate their business. So basically, is that they probably never filed for taxes or they do not have a tax file. And this will be another problem. Remember, in the stimulus package, there is a 2.1 billion ringgit special pre-hatin grant for micro enterprises where a grant of 3,000 ringgit per company will be given from 1st of May. Last but not least, even if they have the documents discussed above, they are unable to produce the documents to apply for the goodies. Why? There is no soft copy of the documents. 
they probably may not even have the hard copy of the documents or they may probably not file properly on it. And during this MCO, they are unable to assess it if their hard copy are kept in the office. And you may probably ask, can they call their cop company secretary? They probably can, but a lot of company secretary are not operating during this MCO. And the documents probably are in the office. So there's no way they can have all these documents to apply for this facility. That is one of the reasons why there's so low applications and approval for the 0% loan. Do you know that the government actually had made it easy for businesses to apply for the offerings of subsidies and reliefs? And most of them are actually through online. However, without these fundamental requirements, many companies will be unable to enjoy these goodies, I guess. If they have engaged or outsourced their backroom operations, they will not have actually faced this predicament. So now, I believe by now all of you are convinced <clears throat> of a simple need for digitalization, not only to survive, but to do better in this new normal. In this new normal, you can see, even the government are gradually going for online application. All right. Now, let me just uh, briefly on that digitalization will three most important things impact on how your work gets done. It transforms how customers and your company engage. It's very important, which I will share with you later. And it will also interact and create new digital revenue streams. And I think by now, you probably have an idea why is it important, what we are talking about here. By using digital technologies and data in order, we actually create revenue. We improve business, which I'm going to show you examples later. Replace and transform business processes. Okay, We are not just digitizing it. We are actually transforming the processes. And it creates an environment for digital business whereby digital information is the core and how you will keep it. By now, I've highlighted the following advantages of digital technology, which include easy access to information, improved communication, and convenience in marketing. And it promotes innovation and creativity, and also typically ensures efficiency and productivity. Now, let's go to the next level on the importance of digitalization. I'm going to run down just like what Daniel will show you on the seven importance uh, aspect that you will look at, like your trade debtors, creditors. But for me, it will be a bit different. I'm going to run through a few pointers. Hardware. First of all, let's start out with hardware. The question is, are you still using your desktop or notebook and smartphones? Imagine during this crisis, a lot of people, probably, you probably have heard of something called Business Continuity Planning, BCP, okay? If you activate a continuity planning to make sure your business are running and you are using desktop, how many desktops are you going to carry back to the staff home, actually? And your staff is working from home. That is the first question. So, to start off with, you looking at notebook and hard smartwares may not be entirely thought to do with digitalization. It's a wise move, okay? The other thing is, are you using VPN, the protocol to access your data, to reduce of chances of being hacked? So these are the fundamental things when you talk about going into digitalizing your hardware. Now, coming to something that I mentioned about soft copy just now, that is your first step towards digitalization. Look at all the soft copy that you'll be keeping, the convenience of sending documents across, especially, uh, for your application of your wish subsidy program and your special relief to the banks. Everything is actually uh, online. The last thing, let's say you apply a bank, okay, they will go on Zoom to meet you face to face now. The other part is distribution of documents for processing and finalization. That lets you to press up a button to send to the next person to approve, which I'm going to come to it later too. Third part, your most your second most important st stage towards digitalization will be your storage. The, we are talking about mobility, accessibility if stored on premise, right? But 
your storage in the premise, you can't take it home anywhere. So you're talking about have to be accessed. So in this case, if you want to seriously think about digitalizing, you have to go for cloud solutions, basically storing your thing data up on the cloud. All right. I think I'm not going to go define about what is about cloud, what's external drive. All right. But this is something that we should look at because there's two things, safety and speed. It reduces the number of your need for external hard drive. I know traditionally a lot of this packing, you probably store as, uh, storage disk, hard drive, external hard drive, but you imagine you still have to make sure to account for the number of hard drive that it goes around. Now, I myself is an accountant. The next thing, this is my favorite topic, your accounts. Are you still using your manual or Excel? I'm sure big entity are already going for the software, but are you going for accounting software that is standalone? I think you better off outsourcing your, your work or your accounting software moving to cloud solutions. Why? Because if you are having a good enterprise resource planning systems or a point of sale system, posting that will lead first thing when you have a sales, where does it go for? And the next thing, which is very important now, is your cash flow status and planning. If your accounts are not up to date, it's not on the uh, electronic versions, you are not going to be able to know what is your status, what is your position, all right? Especially like what Daniel says, your debtors, your creditors, your inventory. If you don't have the latest information, you can't, you do not know how, where is your real track will be actually. And of course, planning forward, to make sure how are you going to adapt to it. You have to do your projection. Without all this basic updated information, you can't do your revenue. You do not know your project status, your production, your supply chain, overheads. So that will boil down to one thing. You can't even do your scenario planning for going forward. So that is something that why you need to digitalize. Next thing, human resource. Well, of course, now we probably may not be really talking about it, but by digitalizing, you are looking into how your hiring process and your recruitment, okay? Now, gone, I think it's going to be gone are the days where people actually, the first interview come and see you. Now, we actually talking about online meeting. Now, everybody is having Zoom meeting, team meeting, Skype meeting. So that saves a lot of time of traveling and also focusing on that. The other thing is online assessments. You basically are able to do it online and basically you do not have to attend to the candidates. Imagine if you have 20 candidates coming to you, you have to spend time, but concurrently you set a time and do it one shot online for 20 candidates for the online assessment. Just imagine the time and money resources that you save. All right. Now, my second favorite, payroll. Are you still using your Excel sheet to calculate your monthly tax deduction, your EPF, your SOXO, your EIS, your claims, your attendance, everything? I think you better look into what are the software to use for HR, whether you want to outsource it. And the beautiful thing now is if you have read it in cloud solution using the software, basically you are able to work from home and it can be easily authorized by the designated, designated people anywhere, anytime. And by having a master list, you can easily put it on the Excel sheet provided by the SOXO and apply for the wage subsidy program. I think anybody who have done that would definitely agree with me on that. Next things, banking. Still issuing checks. Imagine now MCO, you can't pay your suppliers. Okay, You can't bring your check to your supplier. Your supplier cannot come to collect it. And you probably have two signatures, three signatures. So the checks have to be circling around if you get the right signatures. So we delay. Your suppliers may not be happy if they are not paid, they are reluctant. That will have an effect on your productions. So that will be really a bad point. Online, you actually know your real time. A lot of, I, I can tell you a lot of companies are still not using the electronic or internet banking. And same goes for the payment. They still do not believe on the token that is being provided to key in. All right. And you may probably say that now with MCO, the token uh, is only two, uh, probably may not have brought back. Okay. I think the bank is working on it. They probably will be using your smartphone and uh, with a QR code and a special type. 
to approve it on. Now, transfer of funds overseas, if you are dealing with uh, importations or buying online, all right? Traditionally, you are paying your high forex rates from the bank. You have high processing fee, all right? And for those who have done tra fund transfer overseas before, we will realize that the recipient normally collect less lower money because of the absorptions along the way and they, they may not uh, agree to such arrangement. So if you have a digitalizing your operations with a lot of the online payment, so you basically, if you look at it, is that you will be able to enjoy better rate and probably zero processing cost. Do you know that there is an app going on out there that is as low as an eight ringgit processing fee and you probably uh, remit the same amount and they will receive the same amount. So that's one thing. Okay, moving on to the next point, communication. Okay, well, traditionally, we have our phone calls with our clients, with our suppliers, and we have a project meeting. And of course, we have progressed to the next one, what apps, WeChat, Facebook, on that. So basically, this is something that we have to start looking in. Just like in Piccadilly, a lot of my colleagues, when we want to communicate, we use time. Uh, we use the team, okay, to communicate so that it's within the ecosystems of Piccadilly. So that we'll put it on record. We, it's instead of using we, uh, what apps actually, but we do of course on a personal basis. That will reduce the lack of face-to-face -face interaction. And like if you are going to interact with your clients or potential customers, just like uh, buying of properties, by using this Zoom is going to be a new thing with the clients, you actually able your marketing people able to start talking to your clients. And I always find that it's interesting because now with this interaction, you can actually easily double your frequency and you reduce your duration. So basically your interaction time with clients by using digital means actually has improved and the report is there. And actually like one of the logistic company, they are using Facebook to interact with the client, uh, staff actually in a way, you actually should, can show more compassion with your staff. Every morning, the boss probably say good morning to everybody and ask how are they doing. So that is one of those small little ways that goes a long way. And of course, not forgetting the ability of having a conference call. With this lockdown, everybody can't have a meeting. But just like us here, now we can easily have a conference call, have a recording, easier to arrange. You just send out an invite. can use a smartphone for that. So this is part and parcel. And those who are in a conference call, they may be traveling or they may be anywhere. All they need to do if they're driving, just park their car and participate through the smartphone. And communication, the other thing is that make full use of your emails. It may sound very simple in the world of digitalization, but emails with a powerful message, it actually create a lot of things. There's a lot of social impact. And of course, you can also do it via your virtual showroom if you have one so that you really start marketing to the person. I can tell you a lot of customers nowadays, they will do a lot of research on you before they actually come to see you. So basically they already have a lot of information and they already more or less decided what to do next. So with this less traveling, only what is necessary is communication. Reach out, it allows you the channel uh, to reach out to your clients to your suppliers, to your stakeholders. And it's also very simple, just like a lot of people, this MCO, a lot of people are say, saying, taking a leave from uh, Daniel said, actually com communication with your suppliers, with your key stakeholders, your investors. It will be very difficult if let's say you pick up a phone, but if you are using the Zoom meeting uh, interaction, you can actually can see each other. I think getting an agreement to uh, agree to some arrangements will stand a better chance. Now, for marketing, I think, needless to say, online presence, everybody will have to have think about it, the e-commerce, all right? Then this is part of the digitalizing of your business. A lot of companies, especially the big ones, they already created their own website, their own showroom, like automotive. That actually, one of the ways is they reduce their carrying cost of their vehicles. Property, they create, Property company creates the kind of website that creates the experience, sight and sound, and they can follow up. So this is a, one of the things why it's important to have an online presence. For those who could not affect 
the online present, there are always platforms to support that in the form of if we are on retail or e-commerce, you have people like Lazada and Shopee for retail. And building materials, BMO actually, they provide a platform for people to look source for building materials. And also, of course, selling a property, you have other many property uh, groups. You'll be surprised. It can be as simple also as having a social media presence like WeChat, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp. My experience actually tells me that uh, from this client, I have this client who trades in cosmetics, does it through WeChat, Facebook, and she actually generate a revenue, annual revenue of 8 million. How cool is it? 8 million, okay? Social media, yeah. Okay. So now, by now we all know about Grab. Let me share you with some of the examples if you're still not convinced, okay? This is uh, from real experience. This client of mine in M&E, mechanical engineering, okay? They sell all the, all the electrical parts for projects, for building materials. They sold it. And you know what? When during this time, they actually able to buy in block in buck okay a lot of people need cash so with they, they have the capital they buy up this and you probably will see is that what are they going to do with it Malaysian market may not have enough buyers actually so what they did is they actually created an online presence and they put it in the international market and there are actually overseas buyers that are buying in buck from them mm. after they go online so that is one of the ideas. Why now it's borderless? You go beyond that, all right? Now, so look, actually, one... we have some questions. I mean, because in the interest of time, actually, we have some questions that we want to cover later. Maybe the last point, if you don't mind, maybe we can cover the last point before we. Have okay, can do. Okay, I will just skip and well. Another example probably is I will I will encourage you all to take a look at Domino apps. Actually, gone are the days that you actually do not use. Uh, phone to order your pizza. Go to the apps. It basically helps you to start monitoring your from your ordering, baking, baking and the delivery. All right. So I guess by now you probably will see that that is the interest of digitalizing and what is it about. The next step, which which we. I would like to delve in, but I think in the interest of time, I can't, but I will run through briefly with you guys, okay? Three very important uh, uh, words that they will stick to you once you start going to the next level after all this basic. One, data analytics, artificial intelligence, and finally, machine learning. So these are the three things that you're going to make full use once you have put in the basic on that. So I hope with this simple sharing with you guys about digitalizing your business to survive and to move forward, actually give you an idea about how you should do it. By all means, talk to those experts in IT, the advisors, and come up with a blueprint on how to best do it. Whether you are a micro enterprise or you are going to be a, a, a major corporation, do start planning on that. All right, thank you. Over to you, David. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lok, on your presentation about digitalization. A very nice snapshot about you know different types of businesses. Also, very interesting about the initial part that he mentioned about you know there are incentives being out, out there, but some of the micro SMEs you know they only got a very low approval, six point four percent. So perhaps we can go to that later in the end of the Q and Q and A as well. Right. Okay. Yeah. We will, before we, we have some questions actually from um, you know that we have collated and collected um, okay. beforehand, right? But before that, maybe let us go back to this topic today: uh, cash flow and digitalization mantras to survive COVID nineteen crisis. Okay, Daniel. Right. Uh, I mean, very interesting presentation out there earlier about cash flow, right? Okay. okay. Maybe let's let's try to you know have a conversation about cash flow. Based on your experience of your clients here, yeah, right, and people you consult for, actually at this moment of March, April, and slightly moving forward, how serious is this cash flow problems for major businesses? It is definitely very serious if your business is dealing with customers. That means you are a retailer. 
or you are in service industry uh, facing the customer and you're supposed to collect cash. Can you imagine restaurants, for example, even though they can do uh, packing, how many will pack, right? Uh, shopping malls, when they are closed, most of them really have zero income. Actually, to be honest, it's not zero, it is negative. Why I say it's negative? Because they will have fixed commitment, fixed cash outflow that they still have to run, right? Uh, even though the six months moratorium took effect 1st of April, but those who have existing overdraft, the overdraft interest will still run. So they actually have negative. So for most, I would say easily 90, 95% or above, it's very, very serious. It's in dire strait. Pro without a proper blood transfusion, I don't think 50% will survive. Uh, you said earlier, you know, there was an interesting slide. You say 50% will not survive, 50% will survive the rate. And, and that was eat, quoted right? from yeah. Dr. Michael Khan, oh, the my, Dr. Michael Khan. 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 as ah. quoted in the Star newspaper. Sure. I'm not sure whether he still uh, stood by his uh, yes, estimation, yes, but you have to ask him. Okay, because I have some very basic data. I mean, SME Association of Malaysia says that they did a survey. They said that you know, 33% only have enough cash flow to survive to March. And about 38% only can sustain until April 2020. And this is already that month of end of April. So, you know, I, I feel that's why I wanted to understand, you know, how serious it is on the ground. I mean, Mr. Lok, I mean, would you, could you share a little bit as well, as well from your client's perspective or, you know, what you know on the ground? I mean, how right. serious is this cash flow decision? <clears throat> that is the reason why understanding your cash flow is so important. And also the economic stimulus package, how are we going to help you? Because... If you when you have your up, most updated cash flow, all right, and from what Daniel has shared, after you have actually do a planning, you have spoken to your debtor, you have spoken to your creditor, you have spoken to your workers, that will form an idea what is your current position. And with the cash flow, all right, if you have a financial model, you probably will want, need to plug in what is available from the Package. In fact, the package, <clears throat> I will actually call it economic stabilization package rather than a stimulus, actually, because the stimulus is always like going forward for growth, you see. But before we talk about growth, we talk about stability. So from there, you can see the few big items that there is always there. One, your moratorium of in loan repayment, your tax installment, your EPF. So in this case, if you have the model, you basically can take out this cash installment, uh, this uh, payment over six months, all right, three to six months, and you can see a different number. Second thing, well, after having the moratorium, you're talking about the, what are the subsidies, what are grants, what are the free money that are going to give to you, all right? So plug your numbers into your wage subsidy program, 1002. If you have, let's say, 10, 20 workers, that will save a lot because Let's put it this way. They are meant for 4,000 and below employees. So mathematically, if let's say your employee is 4,000, 1,002, you get is 30% savings from there. And if your wage that you're paying is going to be 2,000, you're talking about 60% savings from there. So that will again change your cash outflow from there. Mm, okay? sure. That is the subsidy. Third point, okay? you're talking about your relief funds. Go all out to apply. All right? And because that will give you the uh, what is the cash to buffer on your overall net cash flow. If you are an SME, there is available of one million, and I can just now I share with you on average people are getting about five hundred thousand per employer for, for SME. All right, for micro SME, they should look into it because it's easily about thirty to seventy five thousand loan out there for zero percent if they can apply. So sure. by using this economic stimulus package, that will give them a different perspective on how are they going to survive the, survive. the current, current thing. We are not talking about growth, sure. anything. We are talking about the current situation. Well, Once you have stabilized yourself, you can start planning about your growth. Then we talk about your customers and all those things. See. In fact, the government has even given, given an incentive about uh, 300000 to apply for a loan at 3.75 for your SME automation and for digitalization, actually. 
So there are free money out there. There are low cost money out there and there are moratorium there. So by all means, look into your cash flow. Sure. Over to you. All right, thank you. Okay, before we go to some of the questions, right? I mean, I have one more, you know, point. I'd just like to, you know, engage with our both our panelists. I think this is something that our viewers would you know, be very interested with, based on both your, you know, uh, experiences, right, in the corporate world. Now, today, twenty twenty, previous major downturn was, we guess, two thousand eight, right? Before that, the 1997, 1998. And before that, the 1986, 1987 crisis. So let's just say, you know, throughout all these experience, all these crises, or any of the crises that you have experienced, right? How would you compare? I mean, in just a minute, we just wanted to have a comparison. How, how you feel? I think this is very relevant to people you know, on the ground. Uh, Daniel, would you like to share? 2020 uh, versus... Any I'm still young. Uh, I'm still young. But I have... <laughs> <laughs> in general, yeah. I had five years of working experience in the 98 crisis okay. and that time, yeah, I had experienced my first pay cut at the age of 26. Uh, okay. Uh, in general, I feel that this is the worst. Uh, this is worse than 2008. Mm. This is definitely worse than 1997, 98. I mm. think the MCO have aggravated the injury. That's my personal opinion. Mm. Now, I do not personally feel that uh, the Bursa Malaysia KLCI is a yardstick. That's not a good yardstick. Mm. But uh, confidence has definitely come to a new low. Uh, we do not know to what extent how much will property prices dive. Mm. Uh, we, I, I remember it, 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 it was very, very... Uh, a sharp dive back in 1998. Uh, I hope it's not that uh, bad this time. Sure. So my personal opinion, I, I can't, maybe Mr. Lokesh, I can't stop beyond 1997, 98. Uh, this is definitely uh, worse than the two yeah, that I've experienced. Your opinion, yeah. Okay. Mr. Lok, just one, your, uh, uh, a minute of your opinion compared 2020 oh, and okay. other crises if you experience. I, I, I think I, I have gone through all the financial crises uh, in, from the 93, the last three, actually. But the previous one are all financial crises, actually. Mm. And they are not pandemic crisis. Mm. The nearest pandemic crisis we can uh, uh, trace back is probably from SARS, Zika, Ebola, and these are pretty much territorial country. Mm. Mm. It doesn't actually affect uh, the global, okay? Like Hong Kong having it, China having it, Africa having it, but other countries that are not having it, they still run. The business still run, economic activity still run, life still go uh, on, all right? But this is a whole new normal. We have never just seen this, actually. And we are talking about on a global scale. Global scale. And I agree with you, uh, Daniel. The worst thing that makes the whole thing come to a halt is the movement control. <laughs> right, Malaysia, we call it MCO. Singapore, call it circuit breaker. Circuit breaker. Because <laughs> basically, is that there is no more economic activities. People mm. can't sell anything. Okay? Except going digitalization, okay? Online presence, delivery, everything. Imagine if we are, do not have Grab, okay? We have no delivery. So that will effectively cut down so much business from other people. So now basically is that everybody is not only thinking about survival. They have to think about actually how to adopt to the whole new normal actually. From the CFOs, to accountants, to the marketing, to the production, everything. Actually, it's a whole new normal, actually. It's no more the traditional way. Just like, for example, like f and I'm sure a lot of them actually will be reducing their number of outlets mm. to cut down or reinvent their business towards more delivery and more sharing. Okay. Look at the cinema. Now, a lot of them, how many is going to dare to sit inside a cinema with <laughs> such proximity, you see? So basically, a lot of people cannot go pato there already anymore. You, know? you, you, yeah, you can't you, uh, yeah, sit next to each other in the, in the, yeah. cha in the chair. You know? So basically, it's like the social distancing. So a lot of these such businesses, all right, will, will, will definitely uh, plunge, okay? But okay. 
I can see new emergence of new businesses actually. Mm. So that is the interesting part actually. It's sure. like a reset yeah. button. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Le. Okay. Maybe we'll go to, we'll take one question, right? Um, and then to Mr. Daniel Chow. So Daniel, okay. uh, there is a question here. It's related to someone in the beauty business, right? I'll just read the question out briefly. Okay. I'm in the beauty salon business with three branches. Okay. All the while, I only use family loan and corporate credit card. Okay. Last month, a banker friend told me I should take S SRF. And I thought MCO was only for two weeks. So this person that asked this question, right, this lady declined. So now MCO is already in its eight week, right? Actually, a bit more than I need money to pay for my workers' rental and pay my family loan with installments. What is SRF actually? And shall I take it? Well, what would say you, Mr. Jan Chow? Well, SRF, uh, <laughs> Special Relief Facility. Uh, for SME companies, uh, lots of detail you can actually read from the uh, internet. Uh, well, what I can share is uh, it's only for number one is for business that is really affected by COVID nineteen, including those who uh, have to close due to the MCO. The money, the facilities are only meant for working capital. It is not for uh, you to open up a new branch or capital expenditure. It's not for refinancing of your loan. A certain key fetch features uh, is, is very good. There's no collateral needed because 80% is guaranteed by uh, CGC, meaning the bank's exposure is only 20%. Uh, maximum availability is 1 million uh, ringgit. I think uh, Mr. Lok have uh, highlighted just now how many have taken average 500 over 1,000. Now, the, the Maximum tenure is five and a half years actually because uh, the first six months since the disbursement, you the business do not need to repay a single cent. The interest is very good, very competitive. In fact, it's very cheap, only 3.5%. I would definitely uh, advocate that this uh, saloon business owner to take it because you never know you need it especially you don't know whether your business will still go back to normal post the MCO. So in a nutshell, uh, that is uh, what SR Special Relief Facility is all about. Uh, go and get it if you are able to. But however, having said that, do not assume that the bank will go easy in approving the uh, SRF. I was told by another forum that uh, the bank will still go through your debt service ratio, your credit score, and have to look at your accounts. And typically, if your company are uh, those uh, old China men who doesn't you know the boss don't take salary, they take advance to shareholder, advance to director, then there is probably a chance that the loan will be rejected. Mm. So over to you, David. Okay, thank you, uh, Daniel, for that you know, snapshot. I think your contact number is on your slide, right? I think if any of them have any questions, about cash flow, so I think they can contact you. I think very relevant points yeah. about you know how to restructure the business. Okay, and then um you know one because of the interest of time, I'll just pose one more last question, Mr. Lok, before we we, we close. Uh, Mr. Lok, uh, based on your uh, sharing about digitalization, uh, you know the, the importance of it, right? Having the hardware, the software, and the planning ahead. But in an organization, who should lead that digitalization effort? You know, in a company. Good question. Good question. It depends on uh, your organizational structure, actually. Mm -hmm. Basically, if you're talk by, by technically, you are talking about uh, uh, getting uh, the, the CTO to do, do it. But then the thing is, how experienced is your CTO, your, your IT people? Some, some may not be able to even afford a CTO. They probably have an IT. So let's put it this way. Call on the days, IT personnel uh, only focus on repairing or troubleshooting your hardware and software. Now, I always advocate is make use of your IT guys to actually identify what are the things that need to be digitalized so that it makes the operation more efficient and effective. So your the, the background of your IT guys is very important. Ideally, they should be the one identifying and also uh, putting the project in place because they also will need to actually hire uh, lies with your, your HOD, all those things. I would recommend actually, instead of talking about who should lead is, set up a committee, okay? That they will actually 
uh, take the lead on it so that there is a segregation of duties and do it step by step. Then from there, you have a leader from, from that committee because it's not, an uh, IT guy probably will know the technical part, but they also must be able to communicate with your marketing guys, with your production guys, what it needs to take on actually, even the finance guys actually. So, well, I may not have a direct answer to yours, okay? But I would recommend setting up a, a committee to look into it by starting a blueprint from there. Okay, right. So a specialized committee with a blueprint to start with. That's right, okay. that's right. Okay, sure. Right. So thank you very much, um, you know, again to Mr. Daniel Chow, very experienced uh, CFO of uh, public listed companies and he's now with Daniel C. Consult and also to Mr. Lok Chi Kian, the Director of Global Business Solutions, Baker Tilly, for sharing their experiences in our topic today, cash flow and digitalization, your mantra to survive COVID-19 crisis. With that, uh, I'm David Shea Chong, your moderator and host. We'd like to thank Titi Jaya. And uh, this is at the end of episode five of Titi Jaya Facebook Live Series. We'll see you again. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Right, thank you. All right. Good day. Bye. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>